This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and as you can probably tell, this is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G, the second generation of Samsung's foldable phone that turns into a tablet as opposed to the Z Flip, which turns into a regular phone from a little compact size thing. So I've already done a first look video on this and it was pretty comprehensive, but this is after two weeks of use. So I'm gonna look at things like battery life, what it's like to live with it, the screen sizes, the cameras and all that sort of thing. We're gonna look at it now. So just like the last gen model, this one's ex really crazy expensive. It's $2,000. And this time you don't get the wireless Galaxy Buds in the box like you did the last time around. Kind of a bummer. That's probably why it didn't get more expensive. But this time around, they are offering trading programs, Samsung and so is retailers like Best Buy and carriers, at least for a while. So those are fairly generous. So that does help offset the price, even though it'll still be mentally expensive. But anyway, you know it's expensive already. Inside, you know the specs are top notch on this, and this is where it takes a leg up over the Microsoft Surface Duo. By the way, we have a Duo review and a comparison between the Z Fold 2 and the Duo on our channel as well. But you've got the Snapdragon 865 Plus, no matter what market, no matter what country you're in, so you know, you're not gonna get stuck with an Exynos CPU. You have 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Yes, that is less storage from the last gen, the original one, which was 512 gigs, which is kind of sad. Samsung said people didn't care. I bet some of you are going to say just how much you care in the comments below. We have triple cameras on the rear, so we're not hurting there in terms of photography. You have your ultra wide, your main wide angle lens, and a telephoto. Each of those is 12 megapixel. And I'll talk about the cameras in a little more detail. And you've got a 10 megapixel selfie camera on the front display, you know, the O hole kind of thing going on there. So pretty well covered. Of course, you've got things like Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth, NFC, no water resistance because this is a folding phone. No way to completely seal that yet. But we do have wireless charging and we have 25 watt fast charging, which does help because the first generation was normal charging. And given the fact that we have a really big battery inside, take a look at the specs on the screen. Uh, yeah, you want to charge as quickly as possible, don't you? So... The biggest improvement for some people will be the outer display, which instead of being this micro tiny mega bezel affair that it was on the original Fold, which very much felt almost like a prototype compared to this, which feels like a very polished product. How Samsung got this far this fast, I don't even know. Anyway, that display is 6.2 inches. It is edge to edge. It's usable. It's still very narrow though. The aspect ratio, the resolution, the pixels wise, it's more than twice the pixels high that it is wide. So when you're doing things like using the on-screen keyboard, it's not going to feel as great as your regular phone, but it's not a tiny itsy little window like the first gen. I think most people will find it usable and it really it is there. So when you're on the go, you don't have to open the phone just to use it. It's perfectly fine for really looking at the news, looking at your text messages, replying, that sort of thing. Even it's not that bad for a YouTube video, obviously for things like phone calls too. That is an OLED display. That is glass. It has a factory screen protector on it, you know, the usual Samsung plastic. You can peel it off one. And also the new inner display, which is ultra thin glass, otherwise called UTG. That's new. The last one was just polymer. So this one still has a polymer layer over the ultra thin glass, but there is glass underneath. That one's now 7.6 inches. So you can see it with the iPad mini latest generation. It's almost the same size screen. So quite an accomplishment. The drawback is, is it's wider to hold. Whereas I said, like in my original video, I can hold the original generation fold pretty easily with one hand. This one is literally a stretch. I can do it. It's a stretch. It's OLED too, and it's 120 hertz. The outside one is 60 hertz. So for those of you who really like those high refresh rate displays, you've got that. So they really have just gone leaps and bounds here with the hardware improvements on this thing. It's a beautiful looking display, like all Samsung OLED panels that they use in their phones. You can see even when we video it, uh, there is some PWM, pulse width modulation, which means you can see the refreshing of the display on a camera. Naked eyes, no, can't. I don't get any eye tiredness or eye strain from it. And your mileage may vary. You know, if you've used Samsung phones, it's not gonna be any different in that respect. Yes, it does feel a bit more like glass compared to the first generation. I know some people felt the softness was a little weird or creepy feeling. This feels a little more like glass, a little less spongy, and it looks a bit less wavy. Uh, the original one was kind of ripply. This one is still a little wavy ripply, but a lot less. Obviously, 
this begs to be used for things like video playback. If you're a multitasking kind of person, there is that split screen feature and you can drag the bars between the two, but uh, you typically end up with very narrow columns. Not all apps work so well with it. That's more like the Surface Duo shtick if you want that kind of thing. But for, if you just want bigger web pages, more content on screen, if it's your consumption device for media, it totally just rocks for that pretty obviously. So for those of you who wish you had a tablet in your pocket, you've kind of got a tablet in your pocket with this one. Sadly, there's still no S Pen support because it, Samsung calls the display tough yet tender, and it is pretty durable. I've owned the original Fold and Z Flip since they came out, and they're in perfectly good shape, but you're still not supposed to poke it with things like, well, active pens. So sadly, maybe someday we'll get that. When it comes to the cameras, they do a good job of not making you feel like, well, you're a second class citizen because you didn't get a Galaxy S20 family phone, you know. So we have those triple 12 megapixel rear cameras on here and they're all very good. I find this a lot like using an S20 Plus, which is very good in terms of photography. Now the S20 Plus's telephoto lens has a 64 megapixel sensor and basically what it does instead of any kind of optical zooming is it basically crops in on that big sensor to create a zoom. Obviously this one isn't doing that. It's a more conventional way of handling them. So you have 2x optical zoom and 10x digital zoom, and it's pretty decent, you know? I'm not going to complain too much about that. And compared to something like the S20 Ultra or the Note 20 Ultra, which have that much bigger sensor and all that sort of thing, those are also a lot to handle for some people who are not used to, say, full-frame photography. And the very narrow depth of field of those, I've seen some folks taking some blurry pictures because the plane of focus isn't right. So with this, this more or less behaves like any traditional camera phone. It's very easy to use. I don't think you're going to mind it. You've got pro mode, you've got 4K video recording at 60 frames per second, slow-mo, you name it, all that sort of thing. You'll be happy with it, I think. When it comes to battery life, 4,500 milliamp batteries, so that's a good size battery, and battery life, of course, is going to depend on what you're doing with it, how much you use the inner display, what your brightness is set at, whether you're on 5G versus 4G. But I found so far that battery life is pretty good. It was on the original fold, of course, that one was only on 4G, but I've been getting about six, sometimes even six and a half hours of screen on time. Again, it will depend on how much you're doing the inside versus the outside. If you use it closed a lot of the time, you'll get better battery life. If you're always using tablet mode, you may get shorter battery life. If you're playing Pokemon Go, God help you, your battery is shot. So in the box, you get the little love note from Samsung that tells you do not poke it with sharp objects and that you get their concierge service, and, which is almost an embarrassment. You know, I think the people that buy this are tech-loving early adopters. I don't think they're the Land Rover set so much, but they have things like Michelin meal deliveries and country club visits for a day and all that sort of thing. They still have the uh, one times more affordable screen replacement service, no questions asked, so that's nice. It gives you a little peace of mind in case you're afraid of what might happen to the screen. Build quality on this, you saw from my first look, it's wonderful. The hinge on this is just like the Z Flip hinge. Nothing really, my impression of that has not changed. It is excellent. You can open it up in a variety of positions and it will stay there much like a very wide shallow, I guess, laptop. It's robust. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to accidentally whap my finger with this thing. It's like <clears throat> strong. So that's nice. And we still have the little dusty intrusion thing in the hinge there with the little brushes and all that sort of thing to try to keep dust out. So after using this one for two weeks, I wish it was longer, but Samsung took everybody's review units back after only two weeks. I can tell you that the weight of it gets me down a little. Sort of pun intended. You will feel this. If you don't have good waistband in your pants, let me tell you, you are going to be wearing gangster pants. Drop them down there. It's a heavy phone. It's heavier than a Surface Duo. It's heavier than pretty much everything out there. So just to let you know that, so you're okay with that. Obviously, it's a thick phone. Right now, folding phones, other than the Duo, are, and that's how they get all the features in there that the Surface Duo is missing, like your multiple cameras everywhere, your wireless charging, and, you know, all that good stuff right there. So it's a chunky monkey, but it's a narrow hold, so I'm okay with the chunkiness for now. So there it is. What would I like to see? And this is going to require future mini miniaturization of technology and all that sort of thing. I would like to see it be lighter and thinner. No kidding, right? And part of the weight also comes from the quality of the build. If you're using nice, robust metal in that wonderful hinge that they have, which is built like a tank, you know, it's 
going to be that way. Of course, like everybody else, I would love this to be more affordable. I would love it to have an S Pen. I would love the display to not be as delicate where you, you, know, you do have to kind of not poke it, be careful with it, all that sort of thing. But beyond that, they have just done leaps and bounds of improvement here, and it's gorgeous looking. It has great cameras. Uh, the display outside is now usable. Uh, it's pretty impressive. And that hinge, right? I mean, well done, Samsung. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.